reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John. When therefore it was evening, on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were locked where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be to you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples therefore were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus therefore said to them again, Peace be to you, as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven them. Whoever sins you retain, they have been retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, wasn't with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days again his disciples were inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being locked, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here your finger and see my hands. Reach here your hand and put it into my side. Don't be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Therefore Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Are you one of those people whose motto in life is to see is to believe? Every time this gospel passage is read in the Mass, many hearers would dislike Thomas because they might think that this apostle does not show a good example of faith to the present Christian community. Thomas in fact, has the identity as the Doubting Thomas. In today's Gospel, Thomas is skeptical. We can also wonder why he was skeptical about this good news of the resurrection of Jesus. We could wonder why Thomas did not believe the other disciples who saw the risen Lord. Is he faithless? Does he not know the real identity of Jesus, despite the fact that he was with him during his public life? How can he be a great doubter of Jesus' resurrection? What could be the real problem in here? Is it really the disbelief of Thomas, or is it the message given to him, or the giver of the message? In our ordinary life, especially during the technological age, there is so much fake news circulating around. And for this reason, we have to be very careful of what we believe. However, it is true that Thomas' time was completely different from our time. But the problem could also be the disciples who give the good news to Thomas. When Thomas came back, and they told him that they have seen the Lord? For him, this doesn't sound true. How credible were they 
when they gave the message to him. Maybe the reason why he did not believe was because if they have seen the Lord, why did they still lock themselves in a room? Why were still they be afraid? If this was a good news, why couldn't he see it in their faces? So, Thomas could have told them, I don't find you believable. When Jesus appeared again to his disciples, this time with Thomas, he told Thomas to put his finger on his side. And the Bible did not say that he did. But he said to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Perhaps in reality, Thomas did not really doubt the Lord. But he doubted the word and the testimony of his friends. There is an ancient saying in the Eastern Church which says, If you want to know if Jesus is really reason, look around you. Look at the faces at the Easter Vigil. In other words, how can we greet Happy Easter if we still remain in Good Friday? because the joy of Easter is not seen in our faces. Yes, this is a very important thing to ponder during this Easter season. Easter must be the happiest season of the year, because in this season, we celebrate our salvation. But we could be like the disciples. Our greetings, Happy Easter, is not credible in our faces and in our daily living. During this time of pandemic, many nations lock down, and so the world's economy is going down. Each day, there are thousands of people being contaminated by the virus. The hospitals are full, and hundreds of people are dying every day. What if some of them are our loved ones? How can we rejoice? However, a preacher said that the witness of Christ's resurrection testifies that the significance of Christian life extends beyond limit that usually defines human existence, that is, beyond time, beyond space, and yes, even beyond death. And indeed, that Christian significance extends beyond the limits of life that we are experiencing during the pandemic, as we face isolation, economic struggles, possible illness, and even death. So, witnessing the resurrected Christ should not focus on the past stories told in the New Testament, but it should be focused on the picture painted in our present reality, which will enable the people to understand and feel that despite of every situation, the reality of resurrection is still experienced in another way. The pandemic is creating a wound in each person's heart and soul, especially those who lost their loved ones unexpectedly. But the resurrected Jesus will give us the Holy Spirit who will sustain us and strengthen us to move on and keep going. Surely, 
this crisis won't last forever. This will make us realize of so many things while we are experiencing this. After this crisis, which we hope to end soon, we will never be the same persons again. This crisis wounded us like the nails that pricked to the hands and feet of Jesus. However, when he resurrected, he still carried the marks of the nails, which shows that he is really the one who has been crucified, but is now risen. So, the wounds of pandemic will remain in us, even if the pandemic will be over. But those wounds will become scars that we will carry forever in our soul. But it is very important because in the future, that would remind us that with them, we were able to arrive where we are and to have become who we are according to what God wants us to be. We will be scarred people, but we are beautiful. There is beauty in our broken and painful stories. Our scars are proof that God heals. Additional reflection from the writings of S.C. Lurie. What if your scars stayed to remind you that you were healed? and your blemishes were signs of times you called upon your light. What if your beautiful round belly were signs of strong years lived and good food eaten, and your wrinkles were signs of you feeling, feeling life and not running away, sign of your bravery of you continuing no matter what. Celebrate the ways in which you wear your story upon you. Those times you laughed so hard, they are written on your cheeks forever. It's beautiful, you're beautiful, and your eyes have beauty dancing within them always.